So hello and good afternoon and welcome. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Stay Trendy by this time in collaboration with Lauren. Lauren Excel. Liam and D Brown Consulting. So you are welcome. If this is your first time, um, you're very much welcome to our monthly webinars. And this particular month, obviously, is very, very interesting. Where today we will be speaking about leveraging artificial intelligence for enhanced business performance. Yes, AI, artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, definitely a noteworthy topic. Um, everyone has been speaking AI in the last couple of years, and it's very key for us to keep our viewers updated with the latest trends within the HR community, the industry, and what's actually happening globally. So stay trendy, and we're going to be true to being trendy. So as we admit people, I see a couple of people um, in the waiting room. Uh, please... Uh, be ready and expect to learn and obviously share information here. So good, 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 good. So I will begin so that um, when you're watching the recording, there's not too much introduction. So with me here today is David Brown. Um, I'm sure if you've been, uh, if you're used to our programs, we've done some collaborations before. So David, it's good to have you here again for the second time. And Titi, obviously, um, I'm hoping we'll do more. So good to have you here as well. Uh, so we're doing this together. So this is no, <laughs> wherever I stop, you know, please feel free to just add. And then, you know, we'll, we just collaborate and make sure that this is another successful session. So yeah, um, yes. So without further ado, let's begin. Uh, David, I'm I'm going to hand over to you to start, right? So you're going to start with us. But look, I'll put on our lovely pictures to begin with. <laughs> Titi. Um, yes, and so I don't need to introduce myself. Uh, well, I don't write my schedule consultant. Debra, I'll leave you now to introduce yourself. And Titi, introduce yourself. No, I can't even pronounce um, your company's name. Ladies first, Titi, go ahead. Um, oh. hello, everyone. Okay. hello everyone, this is Titi Adewusi from Lorem yes. Excellentium, and that's how to pronounce yeah. it. it. It simply means customer, customer excellence, and a lot of what we do is leveraging technology and gamification um, to make yeah. learning fun, also for recruitment and learning and development, so happy to be here today. To you, David. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm David Brown. I'm the managing partner at D Brown Consulting. What we do is we help you achieve a lot more with your data, with the tools you already have. So we do quite a bit of financial modeling, data analytics, reporting, productivity-based trainings around Excel, Power BI, all those tools that makes you more, make you more productive. And of course, latest tool being artificial intelligence. How do we make this thing make us more productive, make us able to do double, triple, quadruple the things we do? without the negatives of AI, which we probably will see later today. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. Ah, good. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, David. So hopefully um, we're going to leave here different, at least with some knowledge that we didn't have. It's always a pleasure collaborating with friends and colleagues in the industry, and I hope to do more of this in the future. So um, I will. The, the, the agenda is pretty straightforward. It's We're going to look at where it all began. That's how we're going to start. Where did it all begin? Just some background knowledge. Um, how did AI begin? A uh, slight introduction. AI at work. Then we look briefly at and some use cases with regards to AI at work. And then we go into machine learning. I'm sure a lot of us have heard the term machine learning. Uh, this is just to help us with what exactly it is and what it's all about. And then more AI use cases so that you know, you're looking in your organization, you're asking yourself, how do I... Um, incorporate this, where do I start? So we have some more AI cases. And um, lastly, we'll end with some Q&A. So we will hope to end at two o'clock so that you can, so this will be like a good lunch break. So we do a Q&A for about 15 minutes and then, you know, we take it from there. So let's 
go. Um, over to you, David. All right, so let's play a short video. Let's. I want you guys to just watch this, and then in the comments, in the comment, chat what you see. What 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 does this short video tell you? What does it speak to you? I hope we've shared audio, but let's try it. If you click, just ah, click. Uh, okay. Did so it? maybe now that okay, you I... reminded me of sharing audio, let me stop my share and I'll share again because okay. I didn't remember to share sound, but I have done that now, and. Okay, right. So can you see? Yeah. Can you see my screen again? Yes. Just click to the next screen to play. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. So let's watch this, everybody. Can you see my screen? We can see your screen, yes. So get no, on the chat. No, can you see my screen, though? Yes, we I'm can. I'm about we to play. Yes, we can see your screen. All right. So let's click and it's okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I say my internet. Okay. Can you hear? Yes, we can. We can. Fantastic. Hey, figure one, what do you see right now? I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table. Cups and a plate and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? Of course. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. And go to the next slide. So this, I like to hear from people. What do you think? What does it tell you? You can just click on the white screen to the right, and then click to the next one. Okay. All right. Okay. So what does this tell you? What does this tell you about um, AI? Any any comments? Let me read on the chat. Anybody? What do you think? What what does this tell you? As Titi always says, and eh? Titi likes to mention that this is the worst it can ever be. Right now, what you're saying yeah. is the worst it can ever be. It continues getting better every single day. What does it tell you? Well, the future is closer than we think. Titi, yes, that's true. Yes. What do we think? Type in the chat. Type in the chat. We're all HR, most of us anyway, are HR professionals or talent professionals. Well, we're leaders. Leaders are also HR professionals. Please, anyone that's a leader here, you are a HR professional because no leader works without people. Being a people person, you need to have some HR skills. So you have no choice. All right. So these three pictures here, these are the godfathers of AI, right? These are the godfathers. The number one godfather to me is the guy in the middle. So if you want to really learn history, you know, when you want to learn a new field, learn the history, understand the history is really key. So Jeffrey Hinton in 1982, or is it 82? Was it, no, is it even 82? Yeah, probably 82. He invented something called backpropagation. It's very complex and I'm saying, yeah, back propagation. Go check it out. Now, that is kind of the beginning of modern AI. 
when it comes to AI, there are really two versions of AI. There is the uh, what we call the logistic or logic AI, and then there is the more neural AI, neural networks. If we can go to the next slide, we'll see what I mean. So you have the algorithmic rule-based AI, right? Now that has been on for, I mean, who can guess? If I say guess when AI really started? 19 what? It's 1940s, late 40s is when it started. That was Second World War, during Second World War. I think Alan Turing and all of those people, those that did the, broke the Enigma code, those are all rule-based AI. Then there's reinforcement learning systems, which is basically neural networks, AI acting like the brain not really following very specific rules, but acting like the brain. Now that is a different kind of AI, really, really powerful. That's the current revolution we're seeing in AI right now. And it's just getting better and better and better. Right, so those are the two versions of AI. But Jeffrey Hinton invented something called backpropagation, which he was one of the earliest uh, proponents of this um, neural network or this making AI work like the way the brain works. And uh, people laughed at him, or all, all those people that were doing those kind of research until we had enough power and enough data, enough compute power and enough data for the AI to really show itself well. And that's where we have something called large language models. I'll leave it at that. Let's move on to the next slide. I'm going to give you too much technical stuff. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So if we go through, this is just a history. You're going to get all these slides. You can see 1986, yep. we had that seminal paper about backpropagation, 92, 86. Then we go mm -hmm. to the next. These are all things that were happening in AI. Let's go to the next slide. Um, then you had uh, a lot of, no, not much progress in, in generative AI until 20, well, you can see 2012, uh, he, they won a major competition where they were competing against logistic AI. And then Google invented something in 2017 called Transformers. Now with that back propagation invented in 1986 and Transformers invented in 2017, the whole thing blew up. And then we got chat GPT and then we're where we are today. And everybody has this, everything's AI, 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 AI. It's a big bubble right now, but definitely there's a lot of um, uh, value in that bubble. So how do we get to the value? And that's what we're going to talk about. All right, so this is a small history. I'll hand over to um, Adora. Adora will take us through some AI at work. How will, will AI fix work? <laughs> will work change? I don't yeah. know. Adora knows this stuff. So Adora, over to you. So will AI fix work? Um, I think... For most people, it's I, well since then um, chat GPT. Um, mo well, I would say a lot of people are familiar with how it works. Um, and if you're not, please find <laughs> definitely find a way for for AI to to work for you because I think one of the things that we know is that in terms of productivity, it's going to be really something awesome. So I think, first of all, we need to get some volunteers. Can we just have a couple of people um, come up with six random words? Uh, volunteers, you can type it in the chat or you can raise your hand. We need six words. Uh, David, you're assisting me on this um, exercise because we need to help people see what AI does. I mean, it's something that quite a number of us are using. Six volunteers, give us, come up with six random words. I'm gonna pick the first six random words I see in the chat. Wow. So, we um, have so ah, we have so much, oh, but uh, I think now I'm spoiled for choice. So food, hey, food? I can see that time somebody is hungry. Huh? Bread. I'll take food. I'll take bread. I love travel. travel. I like the website, and I definitely love Godzilla. Do we have six? Um, yeah. and then ten. I'm taking the first six. They were all so good. Hey, but I love the moon, oh. Maybe if we can add seven. <laughs> okay, let's add seven. What's, okay, what's, good. It's good to see that this is quite shout them out, shout them out. The moon. I love the moon. Yeah. So it just looked First like one, somewhere I'd love to go. So we're coming up with yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll go through them again, right? So we had did you hear did you can you say that again? Somebody move, use it. Okay, all right. So we started yeah. with food. Food. Okay. Yeah. Bread. Oh, bread is food. Let's travel. Use bread out. What, what did you say? I said bread is food. So maybe we should leave bread out. Just okay. to give us more random stuff. Travel. Okay. Uh, well, it's all right. Okay. So, okay. Well, um, food, bread, Azuka travel. likes bread. Azuka likes bread. Let's just give her bread. Why not? Okay. Yeah. 
food bread travel websites, Godzilla, Pen, and the Moon. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. if we have those, so those six random words, and then we need some volunteers, like who's going to help us? We need people to, we're going so to craft the story. Right seven words. Yeah, right? it doesn't matter. Seven people. Any seven people um, from the audience, you know, you can say, we want to craft a story with using these seven words. Who is going to help us? We need seven people who will help to craft they this join us on story. The studio? Maybe they should join us on the main Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, can yeah. stop sharing. So who's who is joining? Yeah. Raise, you can raise your hand if you want to say something. Ah, so everyone who raises their hand, we need a couple of people. We're going to craft the story. You have to be really quick with this. And so one person is going to start using the first word and the next person you're going to continue using the second word. We are crafting a story. We want to see how good we are at crafting a story. So I'm seeing a couple of people. So everybody who's raised their hand, you are going to be unmuted. So please unmute everyone. If possible, we even want them to be hosts with us. So unmute everybody, yes, who has raised their hand, right? So that's Yinka. Okay, um, favor. Okay, who else? Ngozi, I can see your hand. Yep. So everyone who be ready to say something, right? So we're all going to craft the story. I'm seeing. Okay, so we have Ngozi. Who else? I'm only seeing a couple of people. Who else wants to join us in our storytelling exercise? Right. There's only three hands. Hmm. Okay. So lie. maybe we'll have. To I've only seen three hands, so we only have three people. Low. Okay, so um, maybe David, yeah, because Abdullahi, Favor, and Ngozi. Who else do we have? I'm going to co opt Titi um, and, and, and David, and maybe, okay, so yes, Kemi has opted. Fine, fantastic. So, are we ready? Who is going to go first? We're going to use the words to craft a story. Who is going to go first? So Kemi, I've, unmute, I've asked you to unmute as well. Who is going first? I hope we are all ready. Abdullahi, Fabian, yes. Kemi, ready. and Azuka. Yes. So we're we'll going go to alphabetically. Try. Abdullahi and first. Yes, any, yes, exactly. We're going to go alphabetically. So using the first word, or yeah, use any the words, the, the words that we have. Start the story. Abdullahi. At least each when sentence. I, so we're going to start the story. Like you are the king, so the king start. of this. Yes, I was the one that put out food. So wait a food? minute. You will, you will say one sentence. One yeah. sentence. Yeah. One sentence that, that includes all, any one of the words. Yeah. The next person. What's the next person really after Abdullahi? Alphabetically. Yeah. And Favor. Then Favor. Gozi, Then, then Kemi. Gozi, then then Olua Kemi and then Yinka. All right. And it has to be okay. very, very fast. Can we have okay. the words again? And yeah. the, so the next person needs to the continue word. the story. Yeah. You can live without food for 64 days. Okay. You can live without food for 64 days. Maybe, I mean, go ahead. Man should not live by bread alone. Okay. <laughs> the story must flow. Anyway, okay, Ngozi, continue. Continue the sentence. Okay. Traveling is very important for learning these are all sentences that are not tied together but anyway can we can you tie it can <laughs> me okay with which word website any words we're drafting a story using all the words any yeah so pick any of the words to so continue the story okay let me tie it mm -hmm. go ahead the last person um talked about bread, so I will say. Um... Just say it. Just say it. Just say it. We have to be fast. 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 Just Time is going. Time is going. Yeah. Time okay. is going. Bread um is a good snack for travel. Okay. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, if it's nice, it's nice. But the thing is, we want to craft a story we can sell and somebody will buy. Who's going to buy this story for like one thousand, uh, one thousand naira, one thousand dollars? Anybody? Did you like the story? No. Did you like this? Even the people that sent the story don't like the story. Ah, okay. Anyway, I was thinking. I was thinking. Each person, each person can try doing a story with all the words. 
Okay. That was what I was thinking. That okay. was what I was thinking. Okay. Just for time, just for time. Okay. Screen. I've just shared my screen. I wrote the words down. Can I see the words? Okay. I'm sharing my screen. Everybody see my screen? Yes, you can yes. see your screen. So you see food, bread, travel, website, Godzilla, pen, and moon. And then we had Abdul Life Favor. Can Godzilla. I try with all the words? Or we want uh, to not let's do one by one so that so say so, yeah. Okay. So let's next? try again. Let's try again. Who's next? No, I think we should just continue from website so that we can move on. Continue. Yeah. Continue. You don't need to go, the words don't need to be in order. Just pick any word at random. Doesn't matter. But just make sure your sentence has at least one word. All right. Go ahead. Who wants to make an attempt? That's the story. Continue Let's have from one person. Just continue. Okay. Can I just me to pick go again? Ahead. And Okay, yes, go ahead. No problem. Uh, today there's a website for selling anything, including bread and food. Favor, continue. Very nice. That. I think one of the reasons why this website was um, founded was to help travelers, people who are traveling. So when you travel, you get to buy these things and at an affordable rate. Very nice. Continue. Ngozi. Let me help him, Gozi. Okay. So, I think and when you buy things at an affordable rate, you can even shoot for the moon. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Good. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I think what we've been able to demonstrate so far is, I mean, we've we've spent a bit of time trying to craft a story. I mean, there's six of us, and we're trying to gather our thoughts together, and we're struggling. And the story is not really flowing, right? So now let's see what JATPC can do with the same thing, giving the same information. And let's see how quickly it can do it and how the story flows. Okay, David, give it some All instruction. Right. So, so great. So now let me start with instructions. So here I'm going to tell it something. I'm going to say, I will drop seven random words in my next prompt, and I would like you to craft a very short but engaging story with a tragic ending. I <laughs> put tragic ending there just for fun, huh? where each sentence uses the at least one of the words. Okay, this is okay. this is not a prompt. This is a clear prompt. Yes. So let me send that to it. Now, what I expected to say is, oh, okay, let's regenerate this. What I expect to say is, yes, I'm ready. Go ahead or something like that. Let's see what it says. Sounds like fun challenge, David. Go ahead and drop your seven words. Okay, that's what I expected. All right, good. So let's drop the words and then let's see what it generates. I already like this story. Okay. I hope it's not too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not very short. Uh, so this is this is the story. Can we read okay. it? So in a small village, you want to read it? Yeah, sure. In a small village where food was scarce, an ancient pen said to have belonged to a celestial scribe was found buried beneath the old baker's oven. The pen held the power to write destinies on a sacred website, visible only at full moon. <laughs> Eager to end their hunger, the villagers used the pen to write a bountiful future of endless bread. During their celebrations, they decided to travel to the city to share their story, unaware that they had misspelled a crucial word. Instead of a future filled with bread, they had accidentally summoned Godzilla. As the moon rose, casting the eerie shadows, the colossal creature appeared on the horizon, turning their dreams to dust in a drastic... <laughs> In a, in a tragic twist of fate. Twist of fate. Sorry, I couldn't read that. That's it. Yeah, wow. wow. Look this at is... this story. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you to all the volunteers. I mean, what we just wanted to depict, I know we spent some time on that exercise, but you could see that we needed to show you the struggle. It seemed frustrating. Some people were wondering, what, which, which kind of webinar did I even log into today? Boring, hurry up, move on. But this is exactly what we wanted to show you, that we, what it can do for us is so much better, quicker than we could ever do for ourselves. Now, this is a simple example of a story. Think about how you can even apply it in the workplace. 
You can do so much with the work that you're struggling with at work with AI. This um, OpenAI is the free version. There is even the subscription model of this. And there's so many other companies that have their own AI tools. Imagine having AI as your assistant and having been able to do so many of the things you could do under 30 seconds. You see, the application is as much as you make it. It's as good as you allow it be. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we need to know. The more creative you are, the more you can do with AI. The less creative you are, you know, like imagine, look at the, the, the what we asked it, look at the story. We said, make it have a tragic um, ending and see what it did. So your ability to, to instruct, and that's why maybe some of the things that we will discuss is about prompt engineering. If you do understand prompt engineering, then you know the language that HRM, I said that AI um, um, speaks. Uh, so David, do you want to, I used to, your screen is still on. I will. I know I can continue. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to just uh, continue. Thank you. Right. So if we look at what, you know, obviously what is, what is happening here, what we're just trying to depict is to show you that you can be much more effective at work. And um, some people are, uh, you know, they, they, they see these tools, they don't want to use it. We're on a Zoom session today. All of what we're doing can be summarized by AI. And um, we have a video here by, I think Microsoft has re just released um, AI uh, co-pilots, which helps you with your meetings. Some people have, some of you may have meetings that are booked, double booked, you know. Well, your, your AI can, your, your AI assistant can attend the meeting on your behalf, summarize the meeting, tell you what everybody's feeling, uh, the sentiments of everyone, their, their concerns. It can do so much more. Just, I'm just going to share a, I know, I think I didn't share sound again. So I'm going to share. Oh yeah. I shared sound. So just watch this, just watch this. Um, demo. Running late to a meeting, need help presenting yeah. your best ideas. What about that dreaded awkward silence? Copilot and Teams is here to solve those inefficient meeting mishaps. Let's say your last meeting ran long and you're now late to the next one. Copilot and Teams has got you covered. So can you hear? I just want to make sure everything. As soon as you join the meeting, yes, open up Copilot and type in. Okay. So in, what did I miss in the meeting so far? Copilot will comb through the transcript and get you up to speed in seconds. Let's ask Copilot to dig a little deeper. Now remember, the more information you give Copilot, the better the outcome. For example, type in, for each participant in this meeting, what is their biggest concern? But also, what are they most excited about? Within seconds, Copilot can help you identify pain points and opportunities so that you can jump in with fresh ideas. Now, you're well underway in the meeting, and there's a bit of awkward silence. Don't panic. Ask Copilot, what questions can the group ask to generate more ideas? Copilot will provide a list of great questions so you can get the group thinking of new ideas from a different perspective. Copilot makes every meeting more efficient and helps you be present for the discussion. So you can really be in the meeting when you need to be and catch up with Copilot when you don't. And finally, your pro tip, after the meeting, you can use Microsoft Copilot to summarize the meeting and draft a recap for the team. Now that's impressive. Okay. So this is just one application. Running late to a meeting? You know, this is just one um, application of it. Um, I don't know, maybe we can have a, a show of hands. How many people are actively using AI for the work you currently do? You can, you know, just um, anyone who had their hands up previously, I know we still have some hands up. You can just put down your hands, but I just want to, or you can just put it in the chat. Who's using AI? I'm using AI a lot in, you know, the work I'm doing. I'm involved in all sorts of work. Now, however, I know that one thing, a very good way to look at it is just consider that you have an assistant now. We all have the opportunity to have an assistant that works with us all day, every day. Um, so things that we would ordinarily struggle with, whether you were trying to put together a report, presentation slides, whatever the kind of work, a marketing plan, an HR plan, you know, whatever it is, look, there is no limit into what it can help you. However, anyway, we'll get to the however bit, but, you know, I just want to give you a few st uh, statistics. So one of the things that is happening is that at work, you know, 
Look, lots of people get interrupted. It's something that is all, you know, that we we a lot of us struggle with. Um, I mean, hardly a day goes on without somebody saying, oh, you know. So you never have enough time to actually focus on the things you really, really want to do. Um, I always tell people now, like, time is the greatest currency. I mean, if you have time, you have you have money. You have you have your problem solved. You have, you know, like a lot of us are struggling with 24 hours a day. It just doesn't seem enough. So we're here, we're there, but what is this? What are the implications of this? I mean, we can finally get to get, you know, do some of the work that we've always wanted to do because instead of spending so much of our time emailing in Teams meetings, in team chats, we have the opportunity to actually focus on, you know, the work that we really want to, why AI can actually help us. Now, this particular slide is very interesting. It actually shows how good AI, if you look at those, look at green. So we have right now OpenAI, which is people know as ChatGPT, is the there's the free version, which is 3.5. Then there's the 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 um subscribe. I mean uh, the version you can subscription um version, which is about $20 a month, um, which is GPT 4, right? Now look at the green. The green is showing you. GPT-4, the dark green, or look at the green element, and it's showing you how well GTP can is doing on exams, exams that humans take, right? So this, this is the percentile. This is how well. So look at things like the American bar exam. Um, the American bar exam. So how is GTP doing in terms of pass rates? It is doing like better than most of the people. It's on the 90th percentile. So if GTP takes the exam, the bar exam with humans, it is better than 90% of the people that did the exam. Just imagine the possibilities. What, what, what are the implications? There's some people here who are lawyers. Imagine as a lawyer, what this is saying is that it knows that it will do 90% better than the, the lawyers around. So look at these are different types of exams, GRE, you know, statistics exams, GR, you know, you know, GMAT, you know, all sorts of exams. SAT, look at what does this tell us? If you look at this graph, GTP is getting better and better. It's doing much better than humans in the assessment. At least, let's say, yeah, human. I'm not saying that humans are not good, but what it is telling us is that GTP is scoring very, very well. It's at 90th percentile for some exams. It's at 100%. So in terms of knowledge, it's doing pretty good. So what does this say? If you're a knowledge worker or you need knowledge, or if maybe knowledge or insights is an area, a gap that you have, definitely you should be using AI because AI knows a lot. So this is just that one example. I want us to think of the implications because you're not going to get everything here, but you're going to get the, you know, you we all need to put our thinking caps on and see how we can leverage it to help us with the work that we do. So of course there are obstacles to our productivity. You know, we some of us don't feel inspired. We have too many meetings. We don't have clear goals, but guess what? Um, how can AI help us here? AI can help us increase our productivity by so much more than we could ever even think, right? And one of the things that we've seen from research, you know, such as this, is that leaders, you know, we see a lot of layoffs still happening, okay? But leaders are two more, two times likely, more likely to choose increasing productivity than reducing headcounts. Now, if people, so so what does what are the implications of this? Anything that will make people more productive, right? Leaders would have chosen that option than choosing layoffs, layoff options. Most of the time, why are layoffs happening? People lay off staff or reduce headcount because the productivity level is less than expected. Because if you're more productive, whatever the business's objectives, it means that they're meeting it. But when there's no productivity, hey, every business leader is concerned. So if you knew that the productivity of your people can be 10x or, you know, 5x or 20x, then, you know, I think the implications for a lot of people talk about AI and jobs. No, no, no. The truth is that if you were, we were all more productive, then AI would save the jobs of many people. Uh, so that's just a contrary opinion to a lot of the, would I say, myths, the many myths that people, it doesn't mean that AI cannot replace a lot of work, 
But, you know, what people want, there are lots of things that people want that AI can deliver. And I think we need to know that. And some of that information is that AI will save us time. AI will help us work smarter. AI will banish busy work, busybody and unnecessary work. All this information overload. If I don't need to think of everything, I have an assistant permanently doing some work. I never have to mentally absorb things because you know what? All that information is already in the AI database. They can do all that work. AI can help me with search problems every time. <laughs> in fact, I feel so, I can't even tell you the number of things I ask AI for, <laughs> you know, be careful though. I will, I will tell you why, but it can help you unleash your creativity. There is just so much it can do for, for you. And if you're not using it, then please we need to understand that this is one big area that we should be using. So what are some of the areas that we, we should be focusing on and how can we use AI uh, more e effectively? So if you're going to use AI, um, there's good news and there's bad, there's bad news, right? So the bad news is that you cannot come as you are. You need to develop a new set of competencies. The good news is that these competencies are easily acquirable you know there are things that we can acquire one you need flexibility okay you need to be flexible you need to know you know what um you need to have that a lot of times people are not making decisions because um they don't know which decision to make but you need the flexibility of being able to say you know what i can use um, ai or i can use human uh, i can use human so knowing when to choose ai and knowing when uh you know the a human is is the better choice you need that ability to actually discern, okay? You need emotional intelligence, obviously, which is when is it better for a human to do this? Uh, because if you're going to push everything to AI, you're going to get in trouble uh, because um, AI, even uh, luckily, if you use some versions of JetGPT, it will actually tell you, it will confess to you and tell you, look, oh, I don't have human capability. So this work that you're giving me, hmm, I may not do it from a human perspective because I am learning. And I learned, you know, I learned what maybe the correct thing to do is, but you may need to check. So we would need, you would need um, an emotional intelligence. You would need um, analytical judgments. Yes, because um, you need to know when, okay, fine. AI might be a better option for me because what I need to do is, is mainly based on logic. So you would need to be able to make those differences. You would need to evaluate what AI does for you. And I think this is one of the places that a lot of people um, get it wrong. I see people using AI wrongly um, they, because they, they, they can't evaluate it. And where, where does the evaluation, if you don't have knowledge of the area that you're using AI for, oh, AI will, sorry to say, it can really mess you up because it's going to give you information, but it needs, it's your assistant. It is, you know, when you delegate to your assistant, your assistant is not supposed to be doing things that you should do, but your assistant will do the work and you review the work and then you make, you know, corrections and you, so creative evaluation, you need to be able to use the work as a human who already has some insight, knows some stuff and can refine it and make it better. The biggest mistake you will make is to take what AI gives you and use it like that. I've seen people use it for interviews. I've seen pe people use it for assessments and they fall flat because they are taking what AI gives them, hook, line, and sinker without evaluating. So you need to be somebody who is intellectually curious, right? But you need to use your intellect because if you use AI without your intellect or you abandon, um, yeah, some people say it's customization, it's beyond customization. And um, I think one of the key things that you must learn is bias detection. Know that AI, especially ChatGPT, has a lot of information based on what people have already put in, okay? So there's a lot of bias in it. If it has collected information from people that believe that, um, you know, maybe everything that happens to you is based on your village people or, you know, like every, then if you ask AI, it's going to give you information along that line, okay? So we need to all be very careful, be able to identify bias, uh, and that's why the critical evaluation and the intellectual curiosity is very key, because if you're not somebody who can identify bias, you're going to take what AI has given you and you're going to think, oh, you know what, this is... This is
So I think somebody's um, trying to meet all now. Somebody's is on. Yeah. Okay. So this is just, I'm just trying to give us some, you know, like just so that you can look at different areas. So bias detection, very key. If you can't detect bias, huh, AI will lead you to, you know, when they say carry me, they go, it will carry you where you don't want to. And that's why um, some of the new competencies you need to learn is called prompting. Um, if you see one of the reasons why we got, when we crafted the story, why we got what we got was the kind of prompts we gave it. The better your prompting, you know, the better the results you get. AI can make changes based on what you tell it. It takes instructions like a pro. It is a pro in instruction taking. So even when it gives you information, you can always refine it by the instructions you give. In fact, AI will apologize and tell you, oh, I'm sorry, I'm even misunderstood, you know, but the more you refine it, you can perfect the output by the prompts you give. So if you're somebody who's always struggled with clear um, communication, AI will not understand what you're, you're saying. So just some, I'm gonna wrap up this section with you know, some AI use cases where AI is really helping us, especially in the field of human resources management. Ah, okay. One of the areas that people generally struggle with, and I know I, I recently um, <clears throat> saw that um, uh, quite a number of HR tools are using AI. But I think one of the areas the best to me would be analyzing resumes and job descriptions. Just imagine, and this is what some organizations are already doing with it, being able to analyze suitable candidates and significantly reducing the time spent on manual screening. Imagine not having to even look at the CVs or the profiles of people on LinkedIn. Imagine not having to do any of that. AI can do improved candidate matching and you know the funny thing about AI, it doesn't have the human bias. One of the things that we struggle from as humans is bias during interviews. We also struggle from that in performance management. So, you know, bias is a big area. You know now when you don't like the person's face or the person reminds you of somebody that you, you know, um, I don't know, you just don't. <laughs> or maybe you like the person too much because bias works in two ways. Ah, this person just looks like an angel. This person looks like that person you always loved. Oh, this person reminds you of that auntie. I mean... This actually reminds me of um, something I bought a few uh, days ago. It was um, diffusers, right? I smelt it and it reminded me of one of my aunties. Um, and I, I loved her perfume growing up. And it just reminded me. And unfortunately, I lost her recently. And ah, I just bought it. So bias occurs in different ways. I just remind, it reminded me of my auntie's smell, you know? I'm sure everybody has that rich auntie. She was one of those. She was my rich auntie. So imagine when I smelled something that smelled like her, I bought it. So we all have those biases. We do that in recruitment. So, but what AI can do for us, it, it, it does better interviews. So it does better um, candidate matching and, and it reduces time to hire by so much more than we could ever do. Um, I have a client who, um, in fact, if I want to use a use case is that they have um they, they have riders and they were able to collate all their data on on the riders the, of course the the attribute data and they were able to find out from that information the people who are most likely to have accidents so guess what they're doing with that you know they're using the information to i i know it's analytics but ai has is very much linked to analytics they're using the information now to recruit they know the profile of the person more likely to not have an accident and they're using it to recruit their drivers. So in terms of use cases, you know, of course, Microsoft is providing a lot of AI tools. They're also, you know, showing us um, that they, they are able to, I, I know they in particular were able to use their data from their employee surveys, from emails. Imagine quickly looking at, ah, I know, well, email is the employers and that's another thing. Email belongs to your employer, your employers work email. So don't think that when you're using email, so they're able to do a sentiment analysis. They can tell. So instead of even waiting for your comp your um, annual surveys, employee engagement survey, guess what? AI is constantly checking the sentiments of people and, you know, can tell you the pulse of people instantly. You don't even have to be waiting um, for, you, you, you know, you don't have to be waiting for, for people to um, um, do the employee uh, um, engagement survey. So the use cases for AI, like I said, I'm looking at some of the AI tools that we're using and I'm seeing that they are integrating AI. So I'm going to hand over to
uh, Titi. So I just hope that you please keep popping in the chat before we go into the question and answer. And this last segment, uh, Titi, over to you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Honestly, I would like to see in the chat, what would you like? <laughs> what would you like AI to do for you at work? It would be interesting. So remember what we talked about in terms of how AI can help you. Um, I would like to just see people drop in the chat ways they think that, you know, they'll like AI to help them with their work. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but at work and at home, you know, that can also help. Now, before we talk more about some use cases, I just wanted to give you a bit of a background in terms of how does AI really learn? And we'll play this video just to give you a background of how, how it works. So you can appreciate a statement that I'm going to make at the end of the video. Um, so let's have that, the video. Who is controlling? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you hear it? Not yet. Okay. Okay, it's not saying anything. Can you hear it? No, don't worry. There's no sound for now. It's coming. Don't worry. So, okay. Well, okay. I must... Yeah, there. <laughs> Okay, thank, thank you very much. So the, the important thing to note is that AI learned. Are you a STEM professional and are looking to apply for US permanent residency? Then stay tuned because today I'm going to be discussing an exciting option for certain professionals in the STEM field. I'm attorney Carlos Colombo, and today we're going to discuss an opportunity for professionals that are in science, Thank you for that. So Sorry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. So I want you to know that it learns. And if you look at where that AI is now, I want you to know something that David said earlier, that it's currently at the, the worst it can be, which means that it gets better. The more you give it, you know, information, it learns from those information, just, just like a, a, a typical human being learning from information. Now, of course, one of the disadvantages is the fact that a lot of the information is learning from is Oyibo information. So if you think of ChatGPT and think of the fact that it has 100 million users, note that this 100 million users, maybe only 2 million are Nigerians or maybe 4 million are Africans. So it actually needs more African, Nigerian type data. And I can see some of the interesting things that people are saying that they want to do. They want to do recruitment, performance management. They want their AI to help them with developing JDs, help them with fraud and things like that. I would tell you that right now I can help you do the, you know, JDs. Uh, if you do use chat GPTs, can help you use JDs. And then a lot of HR versions of you know, chat GPT uh, coming up. So let's now um, go 
to other things you need to know about AI, you know, before we then talk more about the use cases. Now, AI, as Adara was saying, AI is not perfect. It's interesting to know that AI can actually give you completely wrong information. You know, AI can hallucinate, meaning that it can tell you things that are not even true. You can do something about, check for something about Adora, and it can completely fabricate a story that has no basis. Which is why one of the key skills we said everybody needs to have in terms of using AI is emotional intelligence. You know, that, that ability to be able to read the information gotten from AI and know whether it's true or not. Now, I'm going to hand over to David, and David is going to show you one of these hallucinations that he was having a chat with ChatGPT, and one of the hallucinations that, you know, ChatGPT came up with. <laughs> so, David, over to you. Okay, so this was um, about a couple of months ago. So what, what what was I asking AI to do? So one of the things our marketing team does, I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Yes, we can. Okay, so one of the things our marketing team does is we uh, basically go through webinars. We do lots of webinars every week. So I wanted the team to basically take the webinar and download it, get the transcript and give it to AI to break into a proper article, just to the whole webinar, convert it to a very nice article, edit it nicely. Then we would just do a little bit of editing and load it on our site. So I went to the AI, I said, hey, this is what I want to do. Can you do it? He said, hey, yes, I, I don't even need to, you don't even need to send me the transcript. I'll just send me the video. Just send me the video and I'll make everything happen. So that's what I did here. So what I did, the conversation that continued with AI is what I posted on Twitter. So this is this is the work. This is what I said. She said, how, how long will it take you? It said two hours. That's what AI told me. Now, now let me scroll the conversation that uh, ensued after. So I asked it, are you done? AI said, not yet. I'm still working on the blog post. It's a bit longer than I expected, but I'm almost done. I will send it to you in a few minutes. Thanks. Thank you for your patience and put an emoji, right? Uh, then me, I'm saying, are you sending it as a Word document? How are you even going to send it, right? He said, yes, I will send it as a Word document. You can edit it as you wish and blah, blah, blah. I also include images. Very nice story, right? Very, very nice. Okay, good. As asked again, are you done? He said, yes, I'm done. Here's the Word document with the blog post. Please take a look at it and tell me what you think. I appreciate feedback. This is all AI. This is the AI sending, talking to me, right? Now, I said, I don't see it because I didn't see it. I don't understand what this thing is saying. He said, sorry, I forgot to attach it. <laughs> he said, I forgot to attach it. Here it is. But I didn't attach anything. So it's just saying, here it is. So I'm like, you still haven't attached it. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with my system. Does this sound familiar to you? <laughs> Have it you sounds seen like a very, <laughs> it sounds like a staff. One of them very smart, just likes to talk stuff that doesn't do anything. Huh? <laughs> Let me try again. Here it is. Can you see it now? I said, no. So then I now, I now said, this is very strange. I don't understand. Story, 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 story. I said, I said can you send it through another means, maybe link? And so I said, do everything. It said it was going to send me a Google link. It sent me a fake Google link. I gave it my email address. I said, what email address will you be using? It shared a fake email address. It continued to lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie and lie until the final words it said is the funniest. Uh, let me, I asked it, I said, are you playing with me? What kind of nonsense is this? I knew it was hallucinating. I just wanted it to continue hallucinating more and more. <laughs> so, so it basically said it has done all in its power. That was when I ended the conversation. Let me show you that so basically he said i've done all in my power i can't uh, i'm not trying to play with you blah 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 very funny but this is hallucination it hallucinates but it is worse than a human being it lies very convincingly you know you can catch a human after a while but yeah is this chat gpt what were you using is this it, wasn't chat GPT. it wasn't chat gpt but i won't tell you the name okay. because the company okay. will <laughs> okay okay so <laughs> they, all, they all have this capability it could have been yes to be honest, yeah. because I've used, I, I've gotten very wrong information from, from chat GPT before. It has sent me on a wild goose chase, you know, a few times. So I, I do know um, it gives wrong references um, and it even apologizes when you catch it. And <laughs> sometimes it it's, you know, <laughs> but, and that's why you have to catch it because if you don't know the right thing, then you're going to take it hook, line and sinker, sinker. which is a problem. Yeah. Yes. So I, I think it's important to note that um, it's not yet perfect. It, it will keep getting better. 
But when, once you're using ChatGPT, it's not what I would call the Bible truth, where you take it, you don't verify. So if, if yeah. you tell it, help me do, help me do a small, uh, um, you know, biography on this speaker. You need to be able to verify everything that it has given you. Don't just take hook, line, and sinker. The next thing, go and publish it. And I think yeah. it's important to do that. So it's important to always verify. Just the same way you do Google search, you know that you check um, that. So we, we'll now go back uh, to okay. some more use cases of how AI is enhancing business um, performance. And the reason why we want you to know this is that whatever it is that you're doing now, you need to increasingly explore or have a plan to explore how you can use AI in your business. What are the AI tools that are available? Please, can you help with the sharing of the screen? What are the AI tools that are available? And, you know, how can I prepare? Now, what's going to happen to it in a lot of cases is that you have the main AI, but you still have your own uh, information that you can then kind of have your a plug into it to help and that's really going to be the value that you know ai will do so it's not about just using the general information it's really about doing that and there are really common uses i like what someone said when we whenever you use grammarly whether you like it or not you actually are using a form of form of ai because grammarly mm -hmm. can almost help you with you know even if you spell the word right but when it reads the sentence you understand that this should not be what you're trying to say that's actually you know ai in action. Same thing right now, Google Translate. And I'll give an example. I did a job for a client. And when I was done, they took, oh, they now have, want to do the French and the Portuguese. So I now went to go and meet some people from all these French villages and say, oh, please, I have this job. And by the time they gave me their bill, their bill was going to end up being more than me, the, my original work that I was doing, because they were trying to charge me for award. I'm like, this can't work. You know, I now said to myself, oh, let's go and try Google Translate. So I took the information and put it into Google Translate and it translated it for me. Then we went on Fiverr and then got someone to come and do QA on what Google had translated. And the person gave it a roughly like 85% pass, did minor changes, and I was able to completely translate those things at not even up to 30% of the cost that the people wanted me to do. So you can see how it for me as a business owner, it has improved my business effectiveness. So there's Google Translate. Of course, there's email. There's handwriting det detection. There's, you know, of course, Netflix. Wait, you see it in use. Netflix, Instagram. If you're using anything that's recommending anything to you, even when you use, um, even when you try to look for uh, things on Google Maps, a lot of those things have AI. When it says, oh, I noticed that you're always looking for a nail studio, then it starts recommending various nail studios wherever it is that you're going. All those kind of things. And of course, you have it in Microsoft Office. It's being used in so many things. Let me give you an example. Uh, for instance, um, you can now go to Canva and you find that it's telling you uh, how to help you with your presentation or even from the start. Almost the way you would text. Instead of, instead of you doing your initial design, if you want you to kind of write what you want and then it then come up with the presentation for you. And I would then talk about, you know, in our business, for instance. So we develop educational content. And I can tell you when we get stuck, we actually take the code and put it in, you know, in, in AI and say, please help me debug this thing. <laughs> it can then help you debug it. So I'm just giving you instances and letting you know that as a business, as an individual, you have to ask yourself, how are you using AI? Even if you're not using it now, how can you use it uh, in the future? And I'll give some more um, case studies. Call center operations. Call center operations now, you know, can be frustrating waiting to, uh, 30 minutes to talk to this call center operation. Meanwhile, maybe the thing you want to do is if it's pretty straightforward. So now more than ever, people are using it in their call center operation where you're chatting with the chatbot, but the chatbot is actually an intelligent chatbot using, using AI. So a lot of the information you want can even shorten that space. So you see that even... Um, trying to analyze the calls for the day. They can have also transcription of all the calls and then summarize and give instance uh, and insights into the pain of that. So every business really needs to say to themselves, how can I use AI, even if I'm not using it now? What is happening in my own area, in my own business that I can use? Let's look at another, um, the next one. Let's, so that's just, I'm just giving an example of, you know, call center. I talked about, you know, uh, you know, uh, chatbots. 
using the various chatbots. Um, before, if you wanted to do something, you have it in English, then you can actually, no, you can actually be having your, your, your chatbots automatically talk to people in Yoruba and without it that you went to go and do the translation or someone behind it. Same thing in terms of knowledge base. And this is for people that are in HR. Imagine whereby all your former HR documents can actually be put in a place. And then you can actually then have new staff just go in and in a chatbot actually just be talking to this knowledge base. So that when old staff leave, all that knowledge is not lost. So knowledge management and use of AI in knowledge management is going to be a major, a major, major game changer. When new staffs are coming in and the ability to quickly train them is faster. And even they to have like a their own personal assistant that not only the, the document itself, but even the knowledge gained from other people that have used the document, the kind of questions they've asked, the kind of feedback and the game, it's really going to be a game changer. Let's, let's look at one more example. I know that our time is fast, but so I'll just look at, um, is there one more example that we want to look at? The next line? No, no, no. Okay. No, that's no. Okay, so honestly, that's, so that's just it. giving you various ideas of how we can do it. And one of the things that we are here to help with is, you know what, how red is your business, how red is your organization, and what are the opportunities for using AI for improved productivity, so we can help you with the readiness uh, audit. Another thing is that as people start to use AI, um, there's a difference in being able to write the right prompt. I tell you, it takes... Is a, is a world of difference. And so there's a lot of things that can be done in, in terms of prompt engineering. As I was listening to the person talking about developing JDs, I'm sure if I tell you go and use AI to develop a JD, you be, you, be, you might not be too happy with what will come. There's, there's actually a skill to prompt engineering. And those are one of the things that we can also do help in terms of training for AI prompt engineering. Also in terms of building you know, AI during chatbots for your business, one of the things that we're seeing are doing is saying whereby you have your documents and we build a you know the chatbot that helps the document the HR manual behind it so that it's just a simple one. They want to find out about the HR policy. If they come calling you and finding out, they they'll be able to just do that chatbot. And of course, data is increasingly important. So that thing of building you know, uh, and improving your workflow because you have so much information and data is one of the things that, you know, we can also assist with. I would like, um, you know, Adora and, and Dave talk a bit more on various ways in which, you know, we can we can help. Adora, thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much for that, um, Titi. And I think what we really wanted to show people, at least for, I know there are so many sessions going on uh, on AI. I, I mean, this some some people here have probably attended several different sessions, but at least it's a start. If you're someone who is thinking of, think about the possibilities. And if you you want to start, we can definitely help you um, start. If whatever the application it is within your organization, um, me, Titi, and David, are here um, where we come together as a joint effort because this is something that we really believe is a game changer. And we've looked at the different applications and we know that together we can definitely help most of the people in our client base and our network. So we want to answer questions um, at this point. So if you have any questions, so just like Titi said, from readiness audits to actual training to actually even improve productivity of each individual within your organization, because prompt engineering, it's not people just think you go to JGPT and that's it. No, no, not at all. You can do so much. But the truth is that I've seen a lot of people, not just security issues. You can't just put anything from your workplace into it. And it's not just security issues, but it's a skill to actually know how to prompt and use. And you need to get that mindset. You need to learn it. So we can help in those areas as well. And of course, in discovery for particular automating for particular operations of your organization, you know, we can begin those conversations with anyone. So if you have any questions, um, I think we're, we're happy to help. But so officially, the content that we have for you here, um, I want to thank David and Titi, but we're here to answer any questions. I know we've gone over time. Um, it's because we were trying to do some human things and obviously we're not as good <laughs> in doing it as AI, uh, but I'm happy for us to take questions so you can ask us uh, questions at this point.
Thank you very much. And if you got value, if you got value, please put it in the chat. And I didn't ask at the very beginning. I usually ask. I don't know where the furthest person. I mean, last time we had Liberia and I think Portugal. Um, if you, if somebody is from, I don't know. Let's see who's the furthest away from, from where we. Well, I think we're all world. We're we're all in different locations. But it would be nice uh, to have that in the chat. So in the chat, um, if there's any questions, I'm, you know, feel yeah. free. To, I can see quite a number of um. And, and, and um, I think David can talk a bit about, you know, um, data yeah. and what we can, what kind of support we yeah. can do in terms of um, yeah. yes. data. Because AI is only as good as the data, you know. Uh, so David, mm -hmm. you can talk a bit about that, especially what, you know, um, D Brand Consulting built for yeah. is wonderful. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, I think data is number one, right? So um, the thing is, AI can AI AI is nice, yes, but AI can't work with multiplicity of data. I don't know. I tell people, if you remember the last report you had, what was the name of the report? If you check the end of the report, I'm sure you see final. Then you see final, 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 final. Mm -hmm. You see version two, version yeah. three, version four, version five. Yeah. All those versions mm -hmm. are still sitting somewhere in your database. So AI will come and look at it and see 20 documents exactly the same. What, which one is it going to use to advise you, yeah. right? So you need to I clean know. your data up. Data is such a mess in most organizations, right? And you need a framework for how you manage that. First of all, you need to know what you have. Then you need to know how going forward, how you can always have one version of the truth. So that's typically what we do about the analytic side of things. You can't analyze 10 things. It's one thing. What is the one thing? You better be sure it's the latest thing, not trial balance for November when you're trying to do a board meeting and it's the end of year meeting and you're giving them trial balance as the end of November. They probably will sack you and that's not what we want. <laughs> so, so, so data is super important. Um, and with that data, then you can then start thinking, okay, we can now get AI. Just take AI as an assistant. AI is an assistant that's super, super smart. It just consumes yeah. all the data you have, and then it can now give you back in, in simple English. Uh, you're speaking to it. But if it consumes crap, it will give you crap. But it will give you crap very convincingly, which can cause chaos. <laughs> so so that's the that's the point where you need to fix your data. And that's what we do a lot at D Brown. Definitely. Someone asked about prompt engineering. Mm -hmm. We have a framework on it. I don't know if I have time. I can show you. It's called the CRISP framework. And we take you through that in our prompt engineering course, the detailed uh, framework on, on that. And Adora and Titi and myself, they have domain knowledge. So three of us here have domain knowledge that we can actually help transform your organization. We'll give you the prompt engineering. We'll be able to advise you on what the bots should be doing, how the data yeah. should be looking, where should it be looking at. So, and then you now unleash your AI. Don't jump into, oh, let's get AI, let's get AI. Check your house first. You can start with bots. Yeah, yeah are, I see a lot of people are interested in prompt learning how yeah, to improve. I can see a lot of people are interested in prompt. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I think that our next session needs to be asking <laughs> around prompt engineering. Um, yeah. Everyone yes. is going to get the slides. I mean, we usually send the um slides at the end, just in case you need to recap. And then if there's any other information, maybe around future programs, if we see that, because I know quite a number of people are asking about how to prompt. It's definitely something, it's not even something you should restrict to yourself. I mean, as a person, yes, but imagine your business and imagine your whole department being very effective. Yeah. Imagine everybody it's having an assistant. It's not following you. It's not following yeah. you. Don't let it alone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it's imagine you're just one details. person. Yeah, People one person. Contact details. Maybe we put up yes. um, contact yes. details. But as yes. says the slides, you will get them and our contact details are also... Yes. Our know, details are there. Yes. So if there's anyone, somebody said that they would love it for onboarding, it will be great. I mean, AI is definitely great for uh, things like onboarding because, hey, so definitely, I mean, I believe we already have a solution. Um, I know, Titi, you have some onboarding uh, related solutions. So um, definitely what I would do is we'll get, um, you know, when we send the the slides out, you know, we'll give the contact information out. So definitely I know that you know, onboarding is an area, it's a very great application for, in terms of, of HR. And I, I know that, um, Titi, you have some very good tools uh, around onboarding. So it just starts from somewhere. Um, AI works well with standardization. It works well with knowledge. It works well with databases. 
So, I mean, those are just ways to start. And if there's any other feedback you have for us, please drop it in the chat or reply the email that is sent at the end of, of the program. So I know we went uh, above uh, our time, a bit unusual for us, but I think it was uh, it was well, I want to believe it was well spent. And if you got value, you know, I'm happy that you got value too. So I want to thank David um, and Titi, especially. You, it's been um it's been good doing uh, this sessions with you and i hope that we can do so many uh, more so some people actually use someone say they use copilot and Ge you know gemini yes i think is is it gemini or genie ai you know there's one yeah so i i think some people there's some even that are great for researchers if you're um somebody who is you know i you know i'm doing quite a lot of research now so there's some AI, AIs that are good for people writing books. There's some AI that are good for people writing copy for marketing. There's different AI tools out there. You can just like, you know, <laughs> they're just so much, but you need to know how to use it. People are using it very badly. To be honest, the people who are even using it wrongly and poorly are much more than the people who are getting the 10X out of it. So um, with the right training, with the right direction, we can equip your workforce. Remember, for business, it's about productivity, and AI is a game changer for productivity. If you want to have 100 staff and you have 10, you can actually do that with AI. AI can make you feel like there's 100 of you because of what your 10 people or your five people will be able to do in that time. So I believe it's a game changer for everyone. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, any last words from anyone? Yep, thank you. Ziba, it was nice to meet you. I'm happy that you your time was well spent. I'm just reading the chat. <laughs> okay, good. So um, yeah, so I think we 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 officially close. Thank you and see you next month, hopefully. By All God's right. grace. Take care, guys. Okay. Take care. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Someone is asking for the prompt structure. We'll send it, maybe David will send it to us. And <laughs> thank you. Yes. All right, see you. Also drop in the chat. Thank you, everyone. This was a great session. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.